All right, Jeff is right now putting a sizing of hide glue. This is pretty liquid, right? Yeah. Very liquid, yeah. All right, very yeah. liquid hide glue. In fact, it's so liquid he's painting it. Uh, to size the horn and the core prior to bonding. Now these have both been preheated. He uses these electric heating pads and does it quite a while. Uh, when I have built mine, I've just heated them by the stove. Yeah, in fact, is he has a bow heating by the stove right now that we're going to send you. Uh, the heated part absorbs the glue much better. And now these have to be dried completely prior to bond, uh, the actual binding process. Okay, here we go. As Jeff has said, this is madhouse time. This is when he screams and goes crazy, folks. Things are falling all around. You may have to disregard his language. Things have to go fast at this point. The sized pieces are being glued and then things will really get crazy. You watch the tools, we'll try to explain them later. Everything has to be perfect at this point. The bow horn have to be kept warm. These things are put together, the grooves have to be lined up exactly. And then clamp. Now comes another hairy part. The word perfect used once. Okay. Success. <laughs> Jerry's holding the, a vice like clamp. Jeff is going to bind it. Tools of his own invention through trial and error. He's done this himself on seven bows. See, I'm bottomed out on my clamp. Okay. This is crucial. Jeff's got approximately 150 hours of work up to now just in what he's doing. Out of that joint, getting a couple hundred pounds per square inch on it this way. It's extremely uniform pressure all the way across the surface of the whole piece. Clamps alone just cannot do it. Probably just collapse in the very edge of that piece of horn, but I don't care. I don't care. You're anchoring your tool in place, you say? Yeah. And now you'll steam it. Now I'll steam it and correct it to see if it's twisted, is, is twisted. But I just steam it and untwist it and it'll be fine. It's uh, not using glue in other places it is, but God, it looks like a little bit joint. It's joined real tight everywhere. I found where we, we did crack the very edge of the horn, but it's in a really insignificant place. And it's in a place that's gonna be ground off eventually anyway. That kind of stuff happens because you put so much pressure on these things with that tool. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks good everywhere, John. Well, that's why we did it. Well, Jeff's getting steam out of that pot. What's this doing, G Jeff? All right, just in case the glue gelled while we were binding it in place, I'm heating up the horn side because it's, the horn's a good conductor of heat. And that will hit, transmit the heat into the glue. The glue will re-liquefy and squeeze out of the joint. That way we make sure that we have a, a thin joint. We only want about a thousandth of an inch glue line, a couple thousandths of an inch glue line. And so I'm just trying to gently heat up that horn side a little bit just to make sure that if we had gelling, we correct for the mistake. Gives a better fit. Okay, when we're sinewing, heat is pretty critical. Uh, Jeff has done him in the shower before, or in a bathroom with a shower running on hot. Uh, Jeff will explain this here pretty quick, but this is done right close to our wood stove. Plenty warm. Well, we've assembled all the pieces. This is really the final uh, major step in building this bow. And Jeff's going to do this in four to f three to four or five layers of sinew. You're watching the first one here. Jeff, you want to take a second and explain exactly what you're doing in this first layer and uh, how you're going to apply you know, the following ones which we won't be showing. Okay. What I'm doing is laying down first bundles of three or four long fibers over the midsection of each limb, the bending portion of the limb, and they extend up onto the handle section and onto the ear or the ridge. And I lay these on in sort of a brick pattern, they're staggered. The idea is to cover the wood uniformly with uniform thickness, depth, cover all the wood, I'm laying them wet fibers soaked in glue. I soak the fibers themselves in water before saturating them with glue. I have the gluing surface itself is wetted with fresh glue. When I'm finished with the mid limb section, I move on to the handle and the ear and I lay down shorter bundles of fibers that overlap those that I put on the limbs themselves. That will hold them in place, keep them from peeling up. A fiber, when it contracts, when it dries, when it shrinks, is going to shrink in proportion to its length. So if I were to lay long fibers over a bent section like here or here, they'll pull up when they dry. So I lay short fibers there. I make sure that everything is staggered so I don't have any seams or joints where the bow is going to bend appreciably. It'll break there then. And I make sure that I put a uniform coat on this particular step in sinewing the bow is very crucial. This is going to make or break it. It's the sinew layer that gives the bow its, its structural integrity, its, its structural strength. And if this is goofed up, you've got a weak bow that can break on you. If it's not done in a very symmetric, smooth way, the bow will have weak spots and strong spots and won't bend uniformly. So this is very important. You don't put it all on in big globs that's the wrong way to do it. I mean that's fine for little bows. This bow is going to be a flight bow. It might weigh a hundred, might be a hundred pound draw weight and it might shoot an arrow a half mile someday. If I put all the sinew on in big globs it's not going to shoot a half mile. Alright, you mentioned uh, the bending portion of the limb. Explain that. 
This section right here is the only part of this bow that will bend, only that piece. And so that section has to have whole fibers laid over it with no seams in the bending portion. And so what I do is I retain my longest fibers to be laid down over that section so that I can do it with absolutely no seam. It's a nice continuous coating. This is the ridge, this is the handle. Those sections will be coated with shorter fibers and those fibers are put on there just to build up thickness and to anchor the parts, uh, the fibers that are laid down over the bending portion of the limb. Those are the working fibers. Now this is just the first coat. I'm laying these down in little bundles of three or four fibers, maybe more. When I do my final coat, what I'm going to do is tie the limbs of the bow together. After this layer shrinks, this limb will be bent inward to about here, to about that point. Right. And what I'm going to do next for the second layer is tie the two limbs of the bow together in that place, apply the second layer of sinew, and then the bow is going to reflex even further. All right, you're starting with a certain reflex here, and you're going to end with a reflex basically what we had on the bow that we showed at the beginning. Or much more. The limbs could cross. But at this point, it might be inappropriate to put down a really large reflex by tying the limbs together because the sinew will take a 4 to 5 percent strain. But if I tie the limbs together now, when I get to the point where I'm pulling this bow back, I might be putting in double that strain. And so those outer layers of fiber, the last layer that I lay down, will be doing more work than they're capable of doing, and they may blow on me. So I like to do it this way. I've sometimes started with a bow very nearly straight and sinewed it with this much reflex on the first layer, and the limbs have crossed on me. So I don't want to do much more, because I want a bow, not some broken stick that I hang on the wall. Now the glue is has to be kept warm in order to stay in liquid form, and so as you know, he's got hot water in the pan and glue in the cup, which keeps it in a liquid state. And if it starts to gel up at all or cool off, he'll have to reheat this all. You'll see the sinew laid out on paper towels, which are damp. That's to keep them that way. You don't want dry sinew going into the glue and then going on the bow. It won't shrink. As people do it that way, but the sinew will not reflex even a half as much as it will as if you soak that sinew in water before you lay it down. Because it stretches as you put it on. Here's a good view of the, just a side view of the bow. Uh, Jeff has got one layer of sinew first one put on, he's explained to you how he put them on, but questions can arise or might arise, it would to me anyhow, is the sequence of building that layer and additional layers onto that. You want to explain that, Jeff? Okay. This first layer consists of long fibers in this section, shorter fibers overlapping the first layers laid here, uh, shorter fibers overlapping those laid here and on the handle. Now the second layer that's going to go on top of this will be put on after this cures out. The two limb tips will have gotten much closer together when this dries. They'll be tied together a little bit uh, with a, a string barely taut before the second layer is put on. Fresh glue will be smeared over the first layer of cured sinew. The second layer that goes on will again consist of long fibers over this section laid down first, but even longer fibers now, that overlap the pieces laid on the ends. Now you mentioned curing out period. How days, weeks, 